By this point, you should have Vagrant installed correctly on your operating system. Let that be Windows, Linux, or OS X. In this video, we're going to be going more in depth with the Vagrant tool and how to actually use it in the command line. We'll be looking at how to use the command line tool, what our Vagrant init will do, and the Vagrant configuration. So let's go over into my Mac and we'll go ahead and get started creating a Vagrant virtual VM. I am on my Mac and what I want to do is I want to go in over to my desktop. So I'm going to do CD desktop because I want to go ahead and just create that folder where we're actually going to be storing the virtual machine. Um, but before I create that directory, I want to go ahead and just cover a little bit of uh, know-how on how to look up commands, how to view what commands are available, and most importantly, how the Vagrant command is used in the terminal. So let's go ahead and look at them. So if you type in in the terminal vagrant list commands this will go ahead and show you all the commands that are available to you with the vagrant tool and as you can see there is a wide variety of commands and depending on what you want to do with the virtual VM you'll be able to see uh, the different commands that are available to you now the most important ones that you probably want, are going to use the most is going to be v Vagrant Halt, which stops the Vagrant machine. Vagrant Init, which initializes the original machine with a Vagrant file. And Vagrant uh, SSH, which connects the machine over an SSH connection. And Vagrant Up, which starts the machine as well. There's other ones that you might look at, like the status of the machine, suspend a machine, reload a machine. Uh, there's some more command. There's some more other ones that you might use, but those are typically the ones that are the most common when you're working with a vagrant machine. Now, before we actually start actually creating a machine here, you want to do a couple commands here on your desktop. Let's create that directory here on my desktop, and I'm just going to call this directory. Let's go in here and just call it um, VM. A virtual machine. Now that I have that folder, I'm going to go ahead and, and see, change directories into that folder. And as you can see, now I'm here inside this directory and there's, there isn't anything here. Now we need to be able to choose a virtual machine that we want to use uh, within this project, which is my VM folder. So I'm going to go into jcacademy.com here. And I am here at Atlas. And Atlas is a sort of a marketplace slash search that uh, that is provided for you in order to look up these Vagrant machines. Now, there's also a, a link below this video. You can actually click on it. It'll take you here to this link. So it's atlas.hashicorp.com forward slash boxes. And here you'll find a wide variety of different machines that you can actually go ahead and set up on your on your Mac. So you can see there's a couple of things here. And depending on what you, what version you want to use or if you're looking for something very specific, you can actually go in here and just look for it. Since I'm looking for Ubuntu, you'll see that there's different versions of Ubuntu here. Typically what I like to go with, I like to go with this Vivid uh, 64 version because it's the official Ubuntu server 15.4. Uh, if you want to go with more of a long-term support, you can also do the 14.4, or if you want to do different versions, you'll find them here. For this example, I'll be using Vivid64, just because it's the latest version. Why not? So now here, here, here's a note that you must uh, take into consideration before you create the virtual machine. You're going to uh, initiate the virtual machine by this name right here. You see this? Ubuntu. Vivid 64. So this is how we're going to actually create the virtual machine uh, in our local setup here. And as you can look through here, you can see a couple instructions here on how to how to set this up. For example, Vagrant init Vivid 64. But I just want to show you that this is where that name is coming from. So if you're at a if you're at a different machine that doesn't have these instructions, you can just pretty much figure that out by doing a Vagrant init. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Now I'm going to go over to my terminal and we'll get started with this. Here I am and make sure that you're at that directory that we created. And as you can see here, I'm in users, rec, desktop, VM. 
So I'm going to go ahead and run that command vigor init Ubuntu Vivid64. And this is going to go ahead and create a vagrant file. So if I do an ls minus la here, you'll see that vagrant file there. Now, before you actually start setting up this machine, it's really important that you go and look at this vagrant file and verify that everything in this vagrant file is the way you want. Depending on your knowledge of, of Ruby, you'll be able to configure this file to do uh, lots of configurations and so on and so forth. Or you can just simply go in there and just make the changes that you need in order for it to work with your setup. So let's go ahead and just look inside here um, and let's see what's what's actually in here. So I'm going to open up this with uh, brackets vagrant file. So here's brackets and as, as I mentioned before, you can see here a couple of values here that are being set. You can see that the config VM box is for that name that we configured. And you see a couple settings here. If you want to make this with a uh, private IP address, you can set that here. If you want to configure a specific port that you want to forward, you can also set that here as well. For us, um, I typically like to forward port to 3000 to this machine because that's typically where node runs. So I'm gonna go back over here. So this to 3000. And if you want to set up a private IP address, you'll be able to do that here as well. Which I am using. I'm going to go back in here and get rid of this. Go into here. And what I want to do is I want to replace this with the same setup that we have always been using. I'm going to use 102. Um, the other machine we used 101, but right now I have another machine running on 101, so I'm going to do 102 here for this one. And let's go through here, through all the settings here. Okay, it looks like everything is running. Looks like all these changes look fine to me. Here at the bottom, as you can see, you can enable provisioning with a shell script. So if you want to run uh, inline shell scripts, you can actually do that right here if you just uncomment these lines. But for me, I don't want to run any of these commands yet. Um, we'll be able, maybe if you have more configurations in the future, you can go ahead and change those. You can also change the memory of the machine here. So if you're running more heavy processes, you can go ahead and change that here as well. Now, here's an important uh, fol folder here that we're going to come back and change after we start up the virtual machine. So it says here, share additional folders with the, with the guest VM. The first argument is the path. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. So as you can see, here's that folder um, that's going to be synced with the local machine. So that's going to be the the one that's hosting it. So it's going to be the host with the guest. Um, we were doing this, if you follow the previous tutorial with uh, VirtualBox, we did this with Samba. But um, VirtualBox actually supports the ability to have a synced folder. So I'm going to go back in here and comment this back out because the folder that we're going to be sharing is not yet created. So I'm going to go ahead and just save this file now. And now we're ready to go back into the terminal and run Vagrant up. So I'm going to go open up the terminal now. What you want to do is you want to do Vagrant up. And this is going to go ahead and go off to the internet, download that file, set up the virtual machine, do the network configuration, forward the ports, do all the things that we did manually in the previous section. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run, and then I'll be back when this is done. This typically takes, depending on your internet connection, this could take 15, 25, even up to 30 minutes. And if you're at a really slow connection, it could take it hours. So make sure you be patient and you wait for this whole entire process to finish. The install went ahead and finished. So uh, I want to go ahead and SSH into that machine. You can do this with Vagrant SSH. And this goes ahead and logs you in into that machine. Vagrant SSH. There we go. Now we're inside the machine. And once you're in the machine, you'll be able to do anything else like you would be able to do it on a Ubuntu server. So now I want to do a couple things here. I want to be able to share that directory, which is the www directory that we shared last time, which is with VirtualBox. So let's go make sure if that directory exists. And it does not. So you want to go ahead and just make that directory. Permission denied. So let's run that with the sudo. And let's go back in there. 
and there's nothing in there. Perfect. We actually have created this directory. Let's make sure that has the right permissions. So as you can see here, it belongs to root and the user root. So we want to do a sudo chown vagrant, which is the user, and vagrant, which is the group. And you want to do this to dub dub dub. Do an ls minus la one more time. And as you can see, now the dub dub folder belongs to vagrant. I'm going to go ahead and exit, exit this machine now because we need to stop, stop the machine. I'm going to go vagrant, halt, which will stop the machine. And now the machine has powered off. Now that the machine has powered off, we can go back to the vagrant file and make that change that we need to do for the synced folder. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. And I'm going to go in here and make a couple changes in order for it to reflect that dub 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 directory. So let me go back over here and I want to get rid of this base directory and I want to say var dub dub dub. Okay, so what this is saying is saying where do you want to start and put this folder into the local machine. So the var dub 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 is the one on the Linux machine and the first parameter here it's the one on the local machine. So for example, if you want to say something like dub dub dub, then this will show up in that folder as dub dub dub. But for me, I just want to say it as just a brute folder, um, which is already named accordingly. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to go ahead and vagrant up to start the machine. Okay, it looks like the machine has started successfully. Now, to verify that you're actually sharing that directory within the server, you can do this in a couple ways. I'm going to go back into, I'm going to get rid of this, minimize this, and as you can see, I have this VM folder and has a Vagrant file inside the folder. I'm going to do Vagrant SSH. I'm just going to SSH me into that machine. I'm going to change directories into that www directory that we created. I'm going to make a directory here and call it app. As you can see, it created the, the app inside the local machine. So from this point on, you'll be able just to simply connect your favorite text editor or whatever you might be using to, to, to develop the application. Now I'm going to go ahead and just remove this folder because I don't need it. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to go ahead and exit this and you can always stop the machine by doing vagrant halt. And this goes ahead and powers off the machine so it's not wasting resources on your local machine. Now, that's all there is to setting up a Vagrant file, Vagrant machine, and configuring it with the shared directory among the virtual machine and the local machine.